Hi, it's Dr. Ray. I'm here to walk you through how to write a solid body paragraph and concluding paragraph. And well, of course, this lecture is geared towards writing literary analysis. Um, I find these rules useful in my professional writing, comp classes, really most writing endeavors. Um, this is applicable. So what's a body paragraph? I've mentioned I'm a visual learner. So if you think about you know, the human body, if the introduction of your paper is the brain, and the conclusion is what you stand on, the body paragraph is everything that goes in the middle. So I don't care if your paper is 20 pages or 2 pages. Every paragraph that's not the introduction or the conclusion is a body paragraph. What is a body paragraph? Um, the Native American author Sherman Alexie has this great essay. Um, I think it's called Superman and Me. But the point is he talks about teaching himself to read. And he has this great passage that says, I realize I realized that a paragraph was a fence that held words. The words inside a paragraph worked together for a common purpose. They had some specific reason for being inside the same fence. And that's truly how a body paragraph works, and I will show you um, as we push forward. So here's what a body paragraph accomplishes. So your introduction introduces your reader to your topic, and then your thesis is that debatable claim you're going to prove to your reader. So if your thesis is in a DJ short story checking out, she creates empathy for illegal, illegal immigrants through the struggles her character opens a faces. So that's a good debatable thesis. You're saying that the purpose of the story is to create empathy for illegal immigrants, um, the position of legal immigrants. Someone could certainly disagree with that. So you have your intro and your thesis. What the body paragraphs do is they can contain the support and evidence that proves your thesis to the reader. So how do you write a body paragraph? I teach this in English 100. I use this acronym for my own writing. It's from the website I mentioned, Purdue OWL, um, which is Purdue University's online writing lab. And this is their um, tried and true method for writing body paragraphs. T-T-E-B. T for transition. So a transition, of course, is a word or phrase that acts as a handoff from one idea to the next. It does not need to be fancy, like furthermore. Um, it can be a word like also or next. Um, it, but it is clear to your reader that you're moving from one point to another. The topic sentence. Uh, I, I find often, especially in 112, I'm grading papers, I add the comment, you know, need an original topic sentence. This is your own words um, that tells the reader what you're discussing in the paragraph. And I'll show you an example in just a second. Evidence. So you've got your transition, topic sentence, your evidence. Um, the, anal the evidence and analysis that supports one of your claims and provides a deeper level of detail than your topic sentence. And again, I'm going to show you specifics in just a second. And then B, your brief wrap-up sentence is also called a warrant. Um, this isn't always necessary, but it's so useful. I try to follow this rule um, to end with a sentence that tells your reader how and why this information they just read supports your thesis. So here is an example paragraph. So we're sticking with the thesis about a DJ using her story checking out um, to create empathy for illegal immigrants. So here's the paragraph itself. Additionally, Adichie illustrates the difficult position of illegal immigrants through the numerous characters who take advantage of his, meaning Obenze's position. The Angolans target him at the train station simply because he is naive and alone and likely arrange his arrest at the end of the story. As an illegal alien in the UK, the only employment he finds um, is cleaning toilets for two pounds an hour. It is a job no citizen wants, as workers in the office do not bother to flush the urinals and even leave a pile of feces on top of the toilet lid. Desperate for a lucrative job, Obinze uses Vincent's national insurance number, but ultimately Vincent demands nearly half his salary. When Obinze refuses to pay the amount, Vincent reports him to his boss, costing him the position. Obinze is an admirable, kind character, but is treated as subhuman. Those he encounters leech off him rather than assist him. Through Obinze, Adiche brings readers to see illegal immigrants as vulnerable humans, not a political inconvenience. Uh, now, as a former student, let me use this paragraph. There's a couple typos, word missing, but it's constructed beautifully. So this topic sentence, instead of um, his, they might have said Obinze's, just to clarify. The topic sentence is, Adiche illustrates the difficult position of illegal immigrants through the characters who take advantage of Obinze's position. And they have that nice transition just additionally to show them moving on to their next point. Now, as a topic sentence says it's going to be about characters taking advantage of him, that's what the paragraph is. After that topic sentence, they've got evidence, right? Specifics, the Angolans, um, how he's treated by the office workers where he's a janitor, about 
about what Vincent does. And then they have critical thinking here, right? So they've got the evidence and then their own analysis that she's created this admirable character that people just, you know, leech off of and, and destroy, like break him down. And that ties to this idea that a DJ is bringing readers to say, hey, illegal immigrants isn't just an issue. Like these are human beings. So I just wanted you to keep this formula in mind because it works beautifully. The transition and topic sentence, the evidence, and the brief wrap up. What I'd like to do next is talk about how to write a solid conclusion paragraph. We just covered body paragraphs, so how, what makes for a good conclusion paragraph? So paragraph is what you leave your reader with. It wraps up your essay. It demonstrates to the reader um, that you accomplished what you set out to do, right? You had your thesis, you backed it up with evidence in your body paragraphs, and how you proved your thesis, um, and it gives the reader a sense of closure. Now that seems a little bumpy. Um, in other words, conclusions wrap up what you've been discussing in your paper after moving from general to specific information, the introduction and body paragraphs, your conclusion should begin to pull back to more general information that restates the main points of your argument. Conclusions may also call for action or overview um, for future possible research. So I will break this down into my favorite advice. So all this information when I'm in the classroom and I'm writing on the board, I these are my steadfast rules. Never start with in conclusion, right? It, if you need to like type it as like a diving board to start your conclusion, that's fine, then delete it. It's just, you know, it's unnecessary. It's fluff, it's filler. I always say revisit, don't regurgitate. Meaning revisit, go back to your main points, right? Like one of those main points was um, a DJ is using Obinze to create empathy for, you know, for illegal immigrants. That's a main point. Regurgitate, if you think about, you know, not to be gross, cows, like they chew their cud, they swallow it, regurgitate it back up to chew it up some more. Don't regurgitate it. Don't use, you need to copy and paste these points word for word. So in new language, you visit these main points. And I say, end with your full house moment. So, you know, I grew up in the 80s, watched lots of full house. Um, I know they have a new version of it. They do the same thing in um, TV shows like Modern Family. At the end of the episode, there's this moment of, what did we learn? What was the benefit of watching this? You know, DJ learned, you know, not to um, wear too much makeup or take diet pills or the, the kids learn the value of not lying. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of like a silly example, but I find it very useful. So, in the essay about Obinze, maybe it's a call to action on behalf of the reader, right? You're trying to get them to change the way they think about immigrants or to get involved in some way. So, just make sure you give that overview of why did I read this? How is this going to benefit with me? It's your last chance. Um, you can always, I'd say, think of writing a paper as very much like a lawyer making a case. I'm sure everyone's seen some kind of court procedural. At the end, you want to wrap it up and leave your reader with that emphasized what do they do now and what is the right thing to do. Okay, so this is my overview on how to write solid body paragraphs and great conclusions. And as always, contact me with any questions.